If you've been following my channel for at least a little bit, you'll know that the majority of the videos that I make are about Five Nights at Freddy's. But what some of you may or may not know is that FNAF is not my favorite game series. My favorite game series is one that I actually haven't even made my way through all the mainline games of yet. I stream games in this series all the time, but not that many people watch them because the majority of my viewers are subscribed for FNAF, and that's understandable. While I joke about it, I don't complain about it because I entirely get that most of my viewers aren't subscribed for Resident Evil content, but there's two characters, one in each series, that are strangely similar to one another. While their stories are very, very different, the concepts of their stories are extremely similar. I should say that this is almost definitely coincidental, though I guess it's kind of possible that FNAF was inspired by Resident Evil, but I don't really think so. But how exactly are are they similar? Well, I'll describe one of them, and then we'll see if you guys know who I'm talking about. We have a guy named William, whose last name begins with one of the earliest letters in the alphabet and ends with the sound IN. He has a pretty high status in a corporation that turns out to be pretty evil and eventually frowned upon. However, while he is working there, he is studying a way to make humans better. After numerous interesting discoveries, he creates a substance that, when injected into humans, heals them pretty much infinitely and actually prevents them from dying. He ends up getting attacked, but he injects his healing substance into himself, which prevents him from dying. He promptly becomes a monster. He constantly goes through things that should kill normal people, but he always comes back and even evolves over time. But by the end of his outing, he seems to die burning in a fire. Also, a very important character in his series of games is actually his child. So yeah, that's that. Now, who do you think I'm talking about? If you follow my channel and know a lot about FNAF, then you probably think I'm talking about William Afton, right? His first name is William. His last name begins with A, the first letter of the alphabet, and it ends with an IN sound, Afton. He is the co-owner of Fazbear Entertainment, which even without him ends up being evil as shit. After all the murders at Freddy's, Fazbear Entertainment ends up being pretty hated as well, though it does bounce back eventually. Regardless, while Afton was the co-owner of Freddy's, he discovers Remnant and kills kids creating more of it, then melts it down. When injected into a person, Remnant will heal them, regenerating them pretty much infinitely and preventing them from dying. Afton ends up getting attacked by the spirits the Remnant is made of, but he seems to have injected the Remnant into himself, so when he is attacked, it prevents him from dying. He promptly becomes the monster known as Springtrap. He constantly goes through things that would kill people, like getting springlocked and burning alive in FNAF 3, but he still survives. He always comes back, and he evolves over time, going from his normal self, to a springlocked human, to Springtrap, and then to Scraptrap. By the end of Afton's run as the main villain, he seems to die burning in fire in FNAF 6. Also, Michael Afton, the main character and quote-unquote hero of FNAF, is actually his child. So yeah, I was describing William Afton before, right? Well, no. No. I was not describing William Afton from FNAF. I was describing William Birkin from Resident Evil 2. His first name is William, and his last name begins with B, the second letter of the alphabet, and it ends with an in sound, Birkin. He is also one of the most important researchers in the Umbrella Corporation, a corporation that turns out to be pretty evil, creating numerous viruses that kill a lot of people, and they try to cover it up. Birkin is working on a new virus to make human beings stronger and more powerful. This virus, the G-Virus, is able to heal wounds pretty much infinitely and prevent people from dying. Birkin ends up getting attacked by a team coming to collect the G-Virus and he is almost killed, but he injects himself with the G-Virus, completely healing him. He promptly becomes the monster known as G. He constantly goes through things that should kill him through numerous boss fights, but he always comes back. Throughout these boss fights, he evolves plenty over time, especially in the remake where he goes from the base G to G2, then G3, then G4, and finally G5. By the end of Resident Evil 2, Birkin is still kicking it, but he does finally end up dying when the train he is on is blown up and he is enveloped in flames. Also, he has a child, Sherry Birkin, who ends up being an important Resident Evil character, not only as one of the main characters in RE2, but also making an appearance in RE6, which admittedly I haven't played yet, but she is in said game. I should reiterate that I don't think Afton was meant to be this similar to Birkin, and obviously there are some huge differences in each story, but the concepts of the stories are for some reason really similar. I'm like 99% sure it is just coincidental, or me being a nerd and overanalyzing everything to find connections, but you can't deny that there are some connections here, even though they're definitely not intended. Intentional. Hell, I think both are cool characters, but Birkin and Afton, in terms of coolness, don't even compare. One of them easily transcends the other. But which one? Well, I'll leave that up to you guys. But if you say one, but haven't played the games the other one was in, your opinion is invalid. So maybe, FNAF fans watching this video, you should play Resident Evil if you haven't yet. Who knows? I only got into Resident Evil when RE4 Remake came out, a bit over 15 months ago, it being my entry to the series, and it's now my favorite game of all time, and I love almost all of the 13 games I've played from the series. You'll never know if you never try. Up to you guys, of course, but I hope you'll make the right choice. 
and start watching my Resident Evil streams because they're really fun. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.